snoring a normal phenomenon or can it be a cause of an underlying disease? Hello, I am Dr. Nisha Alice Joseph, ENT Specialist at Abir Medical Center and today I will discuss with you a few things about snoring and how it affects our quality of life and what exactly is sleep apnea. Most of us snore, it's kind of common actually, but when the snoring becomes high in intensity, it starts disturbing your partners starts disturbing your social relations and quality of life, then definitely there is a problem and we need to understand and educate you about it. So who is affected with snoring? Many believe it's depending on the body type. It's, is it for obese individuals or is it for the old age? No. Snoring can affect any age group, any body type, any gender. We see children with snoring problems and in them it is even more difficult because it affects their daily life, it increases fatigue, decreases their concentration span and we see them getting affected with behavioral problems like attention deficit disorder. In adults, the same cycle continues. In them, it affects their personal and professional growth, leading them into a life of depression, poor quality living, uh, poor lifestyle uh, choices, thereby leading their way into a higher risk of several cardiovascular diseases lifestyle diseases like diabetes, hypertension, early incidence of heart attack and even stroke. Definitely a healthy lifestyle and reducing weight, getting a good BMI can be beneficial for people with snoring. But that is just not the only thing. There is an entire spectrum under the term of obstructive sleep apnea. What happens in obstructive sleep apnea is that during your sleep, you're actually stopping your breath several episodes because of an obstruction, some block in your airway. It can be in the nose, it can be in the upper part of the throat or in the lower part of the throat and these are completely reversible causes. It could be just a bent nose, a deviated septum which is very common, can be a blockage in the sinuses, some allergies, can be a tonsil enlargement or an adenoid enlargement very commonly seen among children. If these causes are detected at a very early stage, we can definitely treat them and provides their sleeping pattern and also their quality of life. So what can we do about it? If you think you have a snoring problem or your partner has a snoring problem or your child has a problem, get it checked. It could be just a block in their sinuses or in the nose. We will do a ear, nose, throat examination and then if required an endoscopy to assess if there is a block or obstruction in the airway. If required, we might suggest some scans and another important test is a sleep study. So we will refer you for a sleep study and that will tell you exactly your pattern of sleep and how many times have you stopped your breath in your sleep. We must understand that the management of snoring and sleep apnea is not the same for all. It is tailored according to the need of the patient. So if there is a block that can be reversed by just medicines, yes, we have medical management with some nasal sprays, some temporary appliances that can help if there is a problem in the jaw alignment. And also we have assisted devices, mechanical devices like a CPAP or a BiPAP machine that can help you uh, to have a good sound sleep. And then we have the option of surgeries. Surgical management becomes a definitive cure when it comes to a proper block in any of the uh, airway, that is in the nose, in the sinuses or in the throat, starting from a, a basic uh, septoplasty and adenoidectomy in children, a tonsillectomy or even palatal surgeries are there. When we have all these options with us, I want you to get it consulted at the earliest and find the best management plan tailored to your need so you don't snow your way into a poor quality of living. A sound sleep and not a snoring sleep is definitely a mandate for a sound mind and a healthy life. Thank you.